one of the things that that the the natives said upon my my arrival actually I heard um, if you're just here for the environment um, expand your mind because this is not just about the environment it is about the disruption of our sacred lands that uh, that this pipeline is being laid where in burial grounds in sacred lands and someone said imagine if um, the um, energy partners decided that they really needed to put a pipeline in the middle of Arlington National Cemetery it was that kind of thing so I went because there was a call for people to come they wanted people to come and stand with the water protectors. And I love the idea that they weren't protesters, but water protectors. As a very, it's, you could say it's slightly nuanced, but it's, it's a very real difference. Part of it was to respond to this cry. And another piece was, because obviously it's about the environment, but another piece was, um, historically, since the first Europeans came to this continent, there has been uh, there have been attempts at genocide. And despite that, despite the cruelty, despite the abuse of the indigenous people, they have survived. And, uh, and to, to celebrate their survival and to stand on their side, to help bring light, not both nationally and internationally, on the plight of the indigenous people in this country and to begin to change that. So all, all of Standing Stone is, is a vast array of, of land that's on both sides of the Cannonball River. And it's, most of it is, is reservation land. The, the place that's the largest camp, the Osari Sakawan uh, camp, is on land that's disputed. The uh, Army Corps of Engineers claims the land, but it's still under dispute. And the Army Corps of Engineers has said that we could stay there. So it was just acres and acres. And what was beautiful was there was a place called Facebook Hill. It was the only place that you could almost always guarantee getting cell phone reception. You could look out and you could see teepees and you could see tents and you could see the river and you could see other teepees across the way and it was this this beautiful configuration of of people's homes and living quarters so uh so it was it was quite beautiful to see this diversity of ways people live and the other thing was was the friendliness of people be they both native and visitors different cultures, different sexual orientations, different nations, because we have a profound love of our priceless indigenous brothers and sisters. And because justice is what love looks like in public, we want to be on the love train and the justice train with them as they On the fourth, we, uh, there was a, an interfaith ceremony. Uh, Cornell West was there. Uh, Margaret Bullet Jonas from Amherst was there, and a number of of, uh, of clergy from around the country were there. People of faith, because they've really, really invited the faith community to take stand with them. So, uh, and the and the day was was rather beautiful. It was it was sunny and not terribly cold. It was very icy underfoot, but but not very cold. So the decision was made that we would form a circle, encircling the entire camp. So, so we're all doing this, we're joining hands, encircling the camp, and the word comes out that, uh, that the federal government has said that DAPL cannot continue, that their, their permit was canceled. And there was such joy, it was just, it was amazing that people were just celebrating, they were dancing, they were crying, they were embracing, we were singing. It was such, such joy that this was really going to happen. And, uh, and then it wasn't very long before we heard from Dapple that, well, that may have been, but we're going to violate this because the subtext, of course, is we're a rogue industry and we can do whatever we want. And I think 
I think it behooves us as as activist citizens, not even, you don't have to be an activist to say, wait a minute, wait, if, uh, if I'm prohibited from doing something, if, you know, if I'm told you can't drive your car on these roads, you don't drive on these roads. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're law-abiding peoples, by and large, but when you've got these big corporations who go rogue and say, it doesn't matter what you say, we're going to continue to do this, um, it's really an affront to all of us. You know, we, we pride ourselves on being a nation of law. And, uh, and so people, I think, were, were rightly upset. And, uh, and that was where the determination to, to stay there if you could, or if you were going home, to really do what you could at home to, uh, to address this issue and to, uh, to help bring justice to the native people. So, so here, in the valley, we're really focusing, as they are in many places, on on specific banks. Uh, the uh, there on the website, you can you can find the names of the banks. But uh, the magazine, Yes Magazine, has published both the banks and other corporations who are making money on this, uh, who have invested greatly in this DAPL pipeline. Uh, then last Friday. There were a number of, of people, who uh, five in fact, who who did an action at the TD Bank in Amherst, who who basically shut it down for six hours, and uh, and they were fined with trespass, and were were subsequently fined, and uh, and they've they've gone through the court, so. Um, and what, I mean, what was very interesting was the, the people who work in the bank, the police in Amherst, and the, the people who, who have business at the bank were all supportive of, of our protesters. So, so that's one of the things that's happening. It's, it's trying to encourage people to, uh, to use, the, what, what power do we have? <clears throat> we have the power of the vote, it's, it's alleged, and, uh, and we have the power of the purse. And I think if enough people went to these banks and uh, across the country, not just in Amherst and Northampton, but across the country, went to these banks and, uh, and had that effect of having people withdraw their money, um, we, we would really make a dent. We would make a difference. And it would not only address the, the ills of this particular DAPL pipeline, but it would also look at and, and further expose the problem of runaway capitalism. There is a, a, an old story, a, a mythology, in, in all these native tribes that, uh, that someday they would all unite to defeat the black snake. Now this was before there were pipelines, black pipelines carrying the black crude oil. So, so when, you know, when, when people first started standing against the pipelines, you know, this reminder that this is the black snake that we have come to defeat, to kill the black snake. So, so it, was, um, it was very moving and I, you know, I feel so privileged to have been there and to subsequently not just keep it here but to share it with you uh, because I think it is important for people to be inspired by the uh, the determination and, and the determination to do this in a peaceful, nonviolent way. You know, that they're not protesters, they are water protectors, that they, they put a positive look at everything they're doing.